What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Justin. I hope that you're having a lovely day and today I am bringing you my album review of Van de Graaff Generator's album Pawn Hearts. This is their fourth album which was released in 1971. Of course, as with most of my album reviews, you can go down in a playlist I'll link below and listen to my first listens to each of the songs on the album and get my initial thoughts and reactions. But uh, for now, let's get into it. Pawn Hearts is not an easy album to listen to. This one is not for the faint of heart. This is not for the beginners. This is, this is some deep stuff. It's incredibly cerebral and really, really thought-provoking lyrically and even musically pushing a lot of boundaries. And yet, even though it's not an easy listening, you're going to come away constantly thinking about it more and more and knowing you're not exactly the same person you were beforehand. It's like when you go to the movie theaters, remember those? And, <laughs> and after certain movies, you walk out of the theater and you just can't stop thinking about the movie. You're, you just cannot get it out of your head. In a similar fashion, the band does the same thing here with this album. The band reveals the darkest depths of the human experience. The music is presented with melody, with malevolence, uh, enraptured with grief and with sadness, and so many different emotions and feelings are in this album. And like I said, it's quite a ride, and when the ride is finished, you don't know where you are. In some ways, the reflection of the human experience in the album reminds me of Richard Matheson's album, I Am Legend, in which the main character is in a dystopian setting when mankind is pretty much all but gone, and he's hunting and killing these vampires that are just hunting him down and they're murderous and they're bloodthirsty and yet at the end we find out that these vampires aren't as murderous as they initially seemed and that they're actually working to rebuild society and that it was in fact the main character who is the monster who is the legend in their minds while many of the tones and the words in the album may sound harsh or rough it actually nicely captures these ideas it's coldly calculated and yet burning with intensity. There's a strong poetic presence as well as a mathematical menace. The album even feels somewhat Lovecraftian in all of its themes, its writing, and the darkness in which it presents itself. Themes of dread of the unknown, or perhaps what has always been known in the human soul. And I think that that is the most interesting thing and perhaps the scary thing about the album is that it puts into words and music feelings and emotions that we all have, but perhaps are indescribable otherwise. The first track, Lemmings, including Cog, opens up with a standing at a precipice about to watch a story uh, unfold, and this one won't end on a cliffhanger. Hamill lightly dances around on the cliffs, he dances around in the intro, just kind of floating on everything before the piercing music comes in with sax and much more enraptured vocals. Organ and sax are incredibly dizzying and dramatic here. I think one of the underrated things in this band is the complete picture of the musicianship. Yes, Hamill is quite capable and excels in what he's doing with his emotions and his vocal performances, but let's not forget all the other members who are pulling just as much weight. Drums, bass, guitar, frip organ all of these things are just blazing the wave-like movements of the track carry many different moods and varying emotions of varying degrees and then there's this really frightening moment about halfway in the song in which the devilish guitar screams and it marches into this machine-like breakdown it sounds like rusty gear is being turned past their breaking point it's really one of the coolest moments in this whole album and then out of this, we shift from this heavy grinding riffage into a little bit of respite. Organ plays a dominant role in just how mental this whole section is. <laughs> and yet everything slowly transforms into this chaos tinged kind of jazz movement. It's incredibly abstract and difficult, but at the same time, as I mentioned at the outset, like a lot of this album, it is incredibly rewarding. It ends with the band slowly breaking down and disintegrating into the shadows. I think the themes presented in the song are also really interesting. You know, ideas of mob mentality and blind faith following the crowd. I like how we stand at the cliffs and watch these events unfold as these other lemmings, these other people are mindlessly jumping off the cliffs. And even though the main character and ourselves, we know that all of us and all of them will eventually die, why are they doing it so soon? I love the lyrics, I know our ends may be soon, but why do you make them sooner? There are some very, very thought-provoking lyrics in here. I love that. What is the reason for their deaths? 
What is the reason for their early graves? Hmm. We move into the next track, Manerg, which is my favorite track of the album. Spoilers. <laughs> I don't know why I should hold that back from you. I love the gentle piano that leads us into this melodramatic masterpiece with Hamill coldly proclaiming a killer lives inside me. Now, if that's not a line that'll get you into the song, <laughs> see the exit, because that's a great intro line. That will jump you right into the story. It's darkly anthemic. The music binds us. It releases us just as Hamill's inner demons do within himself, within the main character. There's a war between good and evil that rages in his words, rages inside his spirit, and his struggle is wonderfully realized in this track. The calming bombs of organ crash against patient drums and saxophone. And then we get into uh, one of my like favorite moments, bar none in the album. The sax riff and the machine-like breakdown feels like a mental breakdown. It is so masterful. It feels so incredibly powerful. The way that Hamill streaks out of that moment Come on. You can feel his cries for help surround and echo off of the walls of his mind. And then slowly, slowly that breakdown begins to slow down its tempo. We feel this machine breaking down. The battle has ended and our protagonist withdraws within himself and finds his inner sanctum, which was himself the whole time. This section extinguishes the flames which were burned beforehand and we are granted reflection alongside with Hamill. It's here that the gorgeous melodies from Jackson and Banson float and drift, making us feel like we're in a dream world. Then a bit of a musical revelation occurs as the main character understands that he is just a man with hands and the ability to be used for good and evil. As he mentions throughout the song, angels and demons reside within him and he has the choice to uh, do whatever he pleases. He has the choice for good and evil, just as any other person he is just a man. And yet, there's a small twist at the end with a little bit of demented laughter entering the picture, returning briefly with that midpoint breakdown. Perhaps there's more to this story. <laughs> Even though the first two tracks on this album are epic in their own right, we move into the main meat of the sandwich. We move into, I almost said the bologna, but this is turkey, ham, roast beef. Choose your meat, not bologna. No, 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 no. This is roast beef. Honestly, I believe that this song is 100% totally unique in the musical realm. I can't imagine another band putting a song like this together. I've, I mean, I've heard epics, you know, Close to the Edge, sure, Supper's Ready, all that stuff. I understand that. But A Plague of Lighthouse Keepers sounds like something never ever heard before, and I can't imagine hearing after. Unless Van de Graaff Generator just decided to record it again. I would like to say that this album and this song would be massively influential, and maybe it was, and maybe it is. But as I said, I can't imagine anything coming close or touching uh, the musical drama, the lyricism, the storytelling, as Van de Graaff Generator did in this one. How can you put into words, into a story, humanity? A mystical and psychological web is spun as this story of this lighthouse keeper and the ghost which haunts him is woven for us. I think to a certain point the music in this track is indescribable. I think the band is really really on fire here. Uh, if you listen to the live recordings of this one, it is phenomenal just the way that they come together to bring this mysterious and mystical song together. I don't even want to call it a song, I want to call it like a, a work of art. I love the way that the urgent saxophones come in when the ships are colliding and we sink along with the music underwater. There's absolutely gorgeous and beautiful playing from bands in here. The organ, flute, and saxophones surround the shipwreck. The music after this moment even feels shaken and disturbed. And a very nice and unique touch in this part is the effect that's being used on Hamill's vocals because it sounds like he's drowning. It sounds like he's underwater and we are there with him. The atmosphere throughout these moments is crushing, soul crushing. And then about halfway through, we shift into a jazzy kind of swing with an intense breakdown. It dramatically upsets the tempo. The song is filled with twists and turns, and yet each of them feels as if they should be there. Nothing in here feels superfluous. About 16 minutes in, after a calm and reflective mood, we crash into what I would pronounce as dementia, 
as an evil carnival-like theme explodes out of this. Peter's drowned vocals return, buried in the waves, and we too are swept up in the maelstrom. And then there's a really, really sudden change of pace with introspective piano and singing, which builds into a really nice climax. Now, at first I thought it was Fripp playing guitar in this section, but apparently it's actually Banton on the organ. It just sounds a lot like guitar, which I think is a testament to Banton's playing. By the way, Fripp does play throughout this album. I don't know if I mentioned that. Anyways, those were just a few of my brief thoughts on the album, uh, but let's get into my favorite moments, my favorite lyrics, and my song ranking for the album. So my favorite lyrics are off of Manerg, and this was really, really hard to choose because I feel like every single line, word, lyric, syllable, letter is necessary in this album, is important in this album, and could be taken as anyone's favorite lyrics. And I think that that just is a huge credit towards Peter Hamill. But my favorite lyrics are from Manerg, and they are as follows. And I too live inside me and very often. Don't know who I am. I know I'm not a hero, but I hope that I'm not damned. I'm just a man and killers, angels, all are me. Dictators, saviors, refugees in war and peace, as long as man lives. This is the realization of the character in Manerg, that he has all the capabilities for good and evil within him. As he says, I'm just a man, killers, angels, all are me. All the potential is within him for good, bad. And then he lists some examples of people who have used their power and their choice for good or bad. Dictators, saviors, refugees in war and peace. And then he pronounces that that is the way it will always be as long as mankind is around. I think the profound nature in which Hamill delivers these lines is really, really hard hitting. And as I mentioned, the lyrics themselves are just, just, just deep. My favorite moment in the album is off of my favorite song on the album, which is Manerg, and it is the breakdown in Manerg. <laughs> I don't know if you could tell when I was talking about it, but I think that that is awesome. Whenever I listen to that song, and it's on my playlist and I listen to it quite often, it, like, I, like I just jam out to that. <laughs> I think that that is one of the coolest and most intense moments throughout the album. And I love the way that it kind of comes out of nowhere because the music before it, it kind of fades away. And then all of a sudden you hear this alarming noise. Anyways, moving into my song ranking for the album. There's only three songs, so here we go. It's Manerg, Plague of Lighthouse Keepers, and Lemmings. I think all of them are really superb, but Manerg is just like up there. <laughs> so in finality, Besides Manerg, which I listen to a lot, but not like that often. This is an album that personally for me, I'm not going to listen to it often. But I know that I am going to spend time and slice out some time to listen to this album for the rest of my life. And I know that every single time that I do, I'll not only find something new, but I'll feel something new. This is an album that's not afraid to challenge, to question, and sometimes even to frighten and scare the listener us. It's deeply cerebral, incredibly rewarding. It's almost violent and yet with purpose. More show and less tell. Somehow, somehow, I don't even know how, but somehow the album reached number one on Italian charts, so that's awesome. And this is an album that to me solidifies Van de Graaff Generator, their exclusive seat in the VIP section of the progressive community. Anyways, I hope that you all enjoyed my album review. You, of course, like I said before, you can go down in the playlist and listen to my first reactions to each of the songs here. Uh, you can also support me on Twitter and in the comments down below, you can let me know what you guys think of the album there. Let me know your favorite moments and your lyrics and all of that stuff. You can also support the channel on Patreon if you'd like. You don't have to, but it definitely helps out. And otherwise, I hope that you have a great night, guys. Thank you so much for being here. Bye.